You know what happens when a man gets rejected? They kill the girls. Like you've seen this happen on so many headlines. Like lucky uno to my wanita kerana reject. Kerana lamarannya. Lamarannya. Welcome to Pastime, where we do more than just passing time. I'm Hari. I'm Mahesh. And on today's episode, we'll be talking about feminism. Today, we have two special guests with us. Hi, I'm Anis Baharin. I am a women's rights activist. I'm actually from Sarawak. And we both debate, actually. Yeah, we do. My name is Sarah Saihad. I am a female youth advocate who strongly believes in young girls being vocal about their opinions and being comfortable in their bodies. And we're both in the same organization that fights against sexual violence against women called Dear Her. Those are two very special guests today. You guys hope you enjoy this episode. Give us an insight to what being a feminist really means. Well, um, on a very common scale, being a feminist always ties back down to equality having equal opportunity as well as being equal to your counterpart which is the males and females being of equal partner right that's the main point of it yeah. creating equal opportunity oh, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think a lot of people think that oh equality means like okay they should get something that i'm getting and i should get something they are getting but actually no it should be we should both have the opportunity mm -hmm. to both achieve the same thing yeah. and yeah. that's what we're looking at right mm -hmm. yeah but what are the biggest misconceptions of them how is it mostly misunderstood as? Um, it's not only misunderstood as feminazi actually. That's the usual term that people like to use. So people <laughs> think that feminism is all about women overpowering men. When actually it's just about equality or fairness actually mm -hmm. for some people. It's about realizing the differences but still realizing that even with differences we should still be able to get the same opportunities. I think the bigger the bigger problem is not to change the mindset of men. The mindset of the ladies. The mindset yeah. of the ladies who have already been like Inter yeah, inter brain integrated brain into the system. They yeah. are already integrated into the system. And the women, you actually like those who take in that kind of culture, we call it internalized misogyny. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a term uh -huh. that. Oh, it's a term for it. Say it in the camera. Say it in the camera. Internalized misogyny. And we hate it, actually. Yes. <laughs> we hate it. Because, like, um, we do get a lot of, like, you know, people bashing us. Mm -hmm. so, right, so if we have fans, we also have haters. I mean, yeah. let's I mean, not go so far. Okay? <laughs> me supporting a football club, I get bashed all the time. Okay? Yeah, that's true. We don't have to go far to get bashed. For us, we think that, you know, like we don't mind. Like We're actually quite used to all the comments and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then, if it's comments from women who have internalized misogyny, it hurts differently. Yeah. Yeah. It hurts differently. It hits. <laughs> it hits. It's just like, oh, wow, okay. Because it's just like, I'm, I'm fighting for you. Imagine growing up in some kampung where everyone is used to having three to four wives yeah. because there's only a few males who are financially stable to carry you know families right yeah. mm -hmm. so you would feel you know yeah i should marry into one of these families he already has three wives that means he can support another one he'll be yeah. okay with it mm -hmm. and then you come and say no one a man should never have yeah. uh, more than one wife he, she's gonna think this, yeah, this bitch crazy yeah. <laughs> she, this bitch crazy she, she ain't yeah, thinking so straight true. she want me to marry a poor guy yeah. that's not gonna happen <laughs> That's why we're not angry with them. Yeah. We're normally just disappointed. You're sad for we're them, actually. Yeah. 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 I think that's the biggest misconception of feminism, thinking that we're against all these cultural norms, thinking that we're against mm -hmm. like housewives and so forth. We're not. Because we're like, like, also about yeah, choice. We're all. You, know, you just want them to be aware exactly. of what it's yeah. choices. Yeah. We want to empower their choice. But we want you to be educated about your choice and understand what's at stake. No, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You, should. you can make your choice, but you have to be educated. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to stay that way, stay that way. But just know that you can move forward, you know, yeah. that's So, guys, educate us on certain words that people have questioned you a lot about. You start. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, one, white feminism. So that's like a misconception that people usually have about feminism. Whenever they think of feminism, they only think of white feminism without thinking of like, let's just say there's more moderate versions of feminism, such as there's even like Islamic um, feminism, there's even like like moderate feminism yeah. itself but basically white feminism it just it's a very privileged form of feminism that obviously originates from white women <laughs> who most of the things that they fight for are like free the nipple um what else on uh, slut walks slut walks <coughs> right uh, a lot of those issues what are that those what's what's slut walk slut walk. So i know what free the nipple um, is what slut walk uh, slut walk so it's like basically what's slut walk? they get on the streets and they go either naked or very slut oh i've seen that yeah 
So they yeah. just because uh, you know how facial men, liberation. Yeah, because men tend to use the word slut, whore, yes. whore, all those things to you know degrade women, and they're like. That's not a We're degree take the, Okay, let's, let's go home, you so know? So what is the point of doing that? Uh, exactly. We don't know. <laughs> Next. Uh, intersectional feminism. Oh, yeah. Intersectional feminism. Wow, that sounds like an engineering <laughs> term. <laughs> it was made as a kind of a product um, in order because of white feminism. So then we have all these other feminism that wants to come in, right? So like I said, there's also Islam feminism. With Islam, there's also like moderate feminism. There's also so many different types of feminism. So intersectional feminism just means a feminism that accepts all. Oh, okay. Won't intersectional okay. feminism just be feminism? Then? Well, well, yeah, no, because they used to consider white feminism. Some people say feminism, white feminism right? is yeah, feminism. Yeah. No, it's so that means so intersectional feminism is, is everything. Feminism. Is actually feminism, not white feminism. It's the what See? we prefer. <laughs> <it's the feminism laughs> you are losing it. You are losing it as much as I am you know, losing you know, it. No, no, no. Have you guys watched Endgame? Yeah, uh, okay, Endgame. You can't be so yeah. oh. <laughs> By the time this video out, if you haven't watched Endgame, it's not my fault. You're late. So you know the Infinity Stones. Yeah, okay, spoiler, let it go. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Okay, so you know the Infinity Stones that Thanos has, okay, yeah. and you have that really one big one called the Soul Stone yeah, right yeah, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. basically what intersectional feminism is. It's the one that ties everyone together. The one where we're like, oh yeah, choice matters. All of us matter. We're still fighting for equality at the end of the day. This is the sort of feminism that reminds you what this fight is for, what you are trying to push for, the ideologies that you're trying to achieve, and the people that you are trying to reach. This is the essence of intersectional feminism, upholding women's rights to have options and to be able to choose. Basically, that's what it is. I feel like this conversation just took a peek just because she used Endgame and <laughs> Infinity Stone <laughs> to explain the term in feminism. Well, that yeah, is yeah, but it, different by, level by explaining it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a word to ask. I have a request. Mm -hmm. Bro appropriating. <laughs> Please yeah. explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I've not heard of that word. Well, before. um, th these aren't like everyday terms that feminists use, but instead these are terms that are often used in gender studies. It's an actual thing, guys. So you know, in gender studies, this thing called bro appropriating is basically when a man takes something from a girl, most likely you know a joke, a statement, a report. Um, anything of that sort and makes it his you know it's basically like copyright but he appropriated it is it is it like and he makes it a man thing okay. i think it's like you know when i tell a joke and then no one laughs when my friend tells a joke everyone laughs yeah is it like, is it like, like that, that? Uh -huh. is, is it a bad thing though um yeah. in, uh, in a lot of essence yeah it's quite bad because it can reach to the level of them taking ideas of your art ideas of okay imagine your script right this writing for endgame <laughs> Then okay. like you're a girl and you you were the one who wrote Tony Stark said I love you three thousand because the entirety of Avengers yeah. sums up to three thousand minutes and then the guy is like I didn't know smart. that. You know that? They take it, they write it down. They're like, I got a new idea. Yeah. I watched all the Marvel superhero series, Marvels. She didn't do that, you know. So people are like, oh, this guy's so smart. And that girl's just there like. You appropriated me, <laughs> you know. That's basically. Basically, right. you're stealing her voice, and you're also demotivating her that's to do it again, right? Because uh -uh. she's like, "What's the point? It's always gonna be stolen." And on that note, what would you like to say to all the women out there? Like, if there's one message you can give them, yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> women and men, I would say women and men. I think women men and men. Need more. All right. Uh, okay. Humans, um, like. <laughs> <laughs> humans, humans, like. humans. Well, I would say you know um. People support and people don't support feminism. But why I think the fight must always go on and you cannot give up this fight, why you always have to empower every person that comes your way and empower yourself, it's so important because you have to understand that every single life matters and it's so valuable. And where whoever you can change and whoever you can you know, bring to light, bring them to light. And even if that one even if you change one person, it's okay. And even if that one person is yourself, it's completely fine because you are still going on the right path to make the world a better place. So I think everybody has to realize their privilege. So there's a lot of people who go like, I don't, I don't want to go with feminism. 
um, and so forth because I don't face the problems. Mm -hmm. And I think it's more about you just being a human being. It's not just about you being female or male. It's about you wanting to respect others and treat others with the like uh, respect that they deserve, right? So that means that even if you yourself don't face these problems, you should just go beyond your privilege and realize that there's other people who could be suffering it too. Yeah. Just because, let's just say, they come from a rich family, they don't look like they have any problems, they could still face like I know some form of sexual violence and yeah. so forth. And like it doesn't have to be in countries that you think are like so bad um, in terms of human rights for girls like Afghanistan, Iran. It doesn't have to be. It could just be the person be right anywhere, next to you, right? yeah, yeah. anyone. And you just have to see beyond your, your own self and you just have to realize that if you want this world to be better, it has to start with you, treating other that's people true, with true. respect. That's true. Yeah. It, it starts with yourself. Yeah, right? it starts with yourself <laughs> and it just goes beyond. If you want happiness and if you want positivity in your life, you have to start spreading it as well. Umesh, <laughs> what have we learned today as men? I would just say, um, be the change you want to see in this world. Ooh. That's all. Wow. wow, that's Gandhi. Oh, that's Gandhi, <laughs> Gandhi, 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 Gandhi. Yeah, yeah. Relates, it, relates. My is all about quotes, by the way. He's full of quotes and all these things. Yes. Tons of them in the back of his head. Yeah, um, I think we've learned a lot about feminism. We've learned that it's not this one fixed thing, it's not a concrete thing, and it means so much more. And even as a guy, you can have certain beliefs in it and still be a feminist. You don't have to confirm to all of their. The, the ways and the things that they do. You can believe in certain things and not believe in other things, but at the end of the day, you have to respect what they want. That's it for the episode of Pastime this week, guys. We hope you really enjoyed it. Don't forget, we're from the organization Dear Her, so don't forget to follow our Instagram and Twitter account at Dear Her. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to hit the like button. Also, click the bell button to get notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to comment. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to Lit TV. We in which we tell our girls to cover up themselves, to take care, we give them pepper spray, so on and so forth. But we tell our boys to go out and play. We don't necessarily sit them down and be like, don't rape. Kau keluar jangan rogora. We tell our girls, don't get raped. But we don't exactly teach our boys. Kau jangan rogora, jangan. Kau jangan eh.